Uh, my name is Sam McLean. Uh, I come from Arctic Wolf Networks. Um, we're a relatively new security startup um, based out of uh, Silicon Valley and Provo. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about um, a new approach to security operations. Um, we focus, uh, just by way of pedigree, uh, most of our senior staff comes from Bluecoat. Um, I spent 12 years there um, in sales engineering and then eventually was a product manager that ran their cloud division, um, which is based out of uh, Draper. Um, but as we all left Bluecoat, the, uh, the, the thought that we were, the problem we were trying to solve revolved around if you're not a Fortune 1000 company, how do you actually do security well? Um, and so we've come up with a unique approach. Um, I'm going to try and keep this as salesless as possible, but given uh, that Arctic Wolf is rather new, it, I felt, you know, sort of as our first public speaking event here in Utah, I'd go through a little bit about how we do things and then take questions. Um, so this is a problem everyone knows. Security is a very difficult problem. Um, we're all here because of this problem is, is difficult. Um, whether it be just dealing with the data that you collect or hiring and maintaining quality people, or if you're a security professional, maintaining your knowledge. Just staying ahead of the current threats um, is a difficult process. It's a lifetime career for all of us. So how do you do it? Um, you know, depending upon who you talk to out there in the market, um, we're losing this battle. And we're losing sheer by numbers. There are far more people that want to attack you than want to protect you. Um, you know, whether you use this survey from Panaman or the Verizon Business, uh, you know, secure small business security survey, it takes almost three quarters for someone to determine that they've been breached. And as we heard in the last uh, lecture, generally you're, you're going to go out of business if you're a small enough company when you don't have the ability to respond. Um, the fines alone at $200 a record are going to wipe you. Uh, you can't sustain that level of, of bleed. Um, so, you know, when we talk to security um, teams around the country, again, 20, 2,500 users and below is sort of the companies we focus on. The biggest problems they have are they have no visibility because they don't have the right tools, the right systems, the right people in place. Um, they really can't stay ahead of the game. Generally, security teams on smaller companies are completely overworked. It may be one if, if that person, if it's two people, you're lucky. But staying ahead of the game, staying up to date on the latest threats, and still manage to maintain your security infrastructure is almost an impossible task. And then lastly, you bring someone on, you hire them from BYU, UVU, you get them trained, and then suddenly they're far more valuable than what you're currently paying them, and they leave. And so how do you deal with an ever-changing landscape? All of the knowledge, all of the information about your security systems walks out the door with them, and you start from square one. All during that time, your infrastructure is aging, it's not being kept up to date, and so cracks form, and then you get hacked. So the current model of dealing with all of these problems is fairly straightforward. Um, for larger companies, they have teams of people. They spend you know, tens of millions of dollars a year. But for a smaller environment, it's generally do it yourself. And that starts with hiring the right people. And I probably think that's a little small. Is that better? OK, thank you. Sorry about that. It's a bit of an eye chart uh, at that size. So you know, you're going to need to hire at least one person that knows what they're doing. Generally, that person's going to be responsible for managing infrastructure, managing systems, working with the other business, uh, other business owners to make sure that the, the risks associated with running a company are, are dealt with. And then you're going to need to design a system. You're going to need to maintain it. You're going to have to work with operations. Or for the most part, security people tend to be their own ops people. So you've got to hire. They've got to have time to do that. They still need to be able to do training. They still need to do professional development. And so you're going to wind up with two or three people or one person who's completely stressed. Then you have to bring in all the process. Hopefully this exists. But again, a lot of times, smaller companies are like, you know what, I'm not a target. I don't need to really deal with this. So they really don't have a good incident response pr program. They don't have processes in place to deal with these things. Um, at best, you're going to wind up that they've got a backup strategy for their servers. And they may or may not test it annually. Um, again, larger companies tend to do a much better job at this, but still relying on backups is sort of a last ditch effort and will be the most painful recovery for any of these problems that you're going to occur. Then lastly, there's the technology. And this is where a vast majority of today's vendors play. And that is, we'll give you better tools, we'll reduce the amount of time it takes to do operational 
um, maintenance on these systems, but at the end of the day, um, depending upon whether you're a Splunk fan or you like something like a Q-Radar or Logarithms from a SIM perspective, there's the maintenance, the care and feeding of that, integration of security feeds, intelligence sources, and generally what we discover is, is that if, you know, if you're lucky enough to have the budget for something like Splunk and you can keep a year's worth of data online, maintaining it, keeping it up to date is probably a secondary or tertiary task for you. So when you do have a breach or you do have someone ask you a question, you go to pull up a query on your firewall logs and you realize that when you upgraded your ASAs two months ago, they stopped the way they did syslog and you haven't had the log data because you haven't had a chance to do it. So again, if you're a one or a two person team, dealing with all the technology, staying up to date, figuring that out tends to be a, a Herculean task on its own. Plus, there's a lot of CapEx involved. You generally are spending money, it's a three year cycle, and then you've got, you're stuck with whatever it is for three years, and if you change personnel during that three years, generally the new person comes in, I didn't like any of that, I'm a Linux guy, not a Windows guy, so they're gonna shift all your tool sets around, so now you've got CapEx that's still bleeding down, and you're investing new time, new money, everything has to be relearned, and so you're probably gonna wind up having a problem. Our estimates, and this is something that we've, we've queued with Gartner, is, is that it's generally around a half a million dollars a year, even thousand employee company, that you're spending on security infrastructure, personnel, tools, trades. Some of that you can't get rid of because your perimeter does need to be maintained. You do need to have AV, you do need desktop agents, all those things, but there's a lot of money that's spent in there that really doesn't have a good value, a good return on that value. Um, and so how do you deal with that? Well, another solution that's currently prevalent today is to go with a managed security provider. Problem is, generally, MSSPs approach the problem from the same way, just outsource. We'll provide you with enterprise grade tools. We'll configure them, we'll turn them over to you, or we'll manage them for you, but we're gonna return to you thousands of alerts a week. You still need to have someone who knows security understands the business context around those events and actually go and deal with those problems on a day-to-day -day basis. That's still someone that's really expensive and you're still dealing with thousands of alerts a week and that's if you're lucky. Our current reduction ratio that we're seeing is probably a million observations to one real incident. So if we collect two billion log lines, it's probably 2,000 incidents that someone needs to deal with and that's maybe a month's worth of data. And that's a full-time job um, for people. The problem is, is that with a managed service provider, if that person that you're dealing with, if you're paying for that person, you're paying fully burden costs, so that might be 150 k a year. If that person gets hired by another prospect or one of the other customers that that MSP provides, you're still stuck in the same boat where suddenly the, the dedicated person you've had is now off in someplace else and you don't have access to them. So the real question with an MSSP is, is there really someone there you trust that you can call hey, Sam, this is Tom, I need to ask you a question about my security. Do you have that level of relationship with your security providers? Do you have access to that person? Do you trust that they're gonna stay around? We've, we sort of, Arctic Wolf sort of attacks this in a slightly different way. We view that for, for small to medium enterprises, security infrastructure and operations is almost utility-like. It shouldn't be something you have to worry about, shouldn't have to be something that you concern yourself with. So we're gonna work to make sure that, that all the different areas, whether it's technology, process, people, we address all of those concerns, work, work with you to provide a level of security infrastructure that's, that's at a base level good enough to prevent major breaches so that your, your time to know about a breach or a malware download or, or a phishing, successful fish is measured in days and hours, not in months and quarters. The way that we do that, again, fundamentally different, is, is that we provide as part of a base OPEX service, a dedicated senior security people. This is the team that, that I run for Arctic Wolf. These are all um, men and women who have you know 10 plus years of experience in the business. Um, the way that we make this successful is, is that they're not dedicated solely to one customer. They each handle the, a, a group of 20 to 30 customers depending upon customer load. But the idea is it's the same person all the time. So all of our customers know who their security engineer is. They know what's going on when they have a question they're able to access that person in real time. We don't have a help desk. We don't have an offshore call center like you get with some people. The idea is provide someone with experience that can maintain context of your business at an affordable price because you're time slicing that person. You're paying for 1 20th of their salary, if you will. Obviously, one person can't do this alone. 
So we also hire operations people, frontline SOC operators, the full staff of people necessary to make this happen. The other area that's rather unique is that by having a dedicated security engineering team that's tied to a smaller group of customers, they aren't as burdened as other people. It's not a body shop. We're not looking for a number of tickets per hour to sort of drive them into to an efficiency perspective. We need that relationship in order for this to work. If, if, if smaller companies are going to have good security, they need time to build those relationships. But I also can vary the experience of, of, of the security engineer. So they're not working in a small environment where once the security infrastructure is built, they're bored because they've got nothing else to do. They don't have budget for some of the latest tools and, and coolest new gadgets that they can play with in the security arena. They get bored, they go someplace else. My guys, we shift them around. We trade off customers every six months or so, maybe nine months. Fresh eyes on a data set for a customer, but also I vary the experience. They might be working with casinos and banks one, one you know, six month period and then go healthcare and architects or law firms. So they're always seeing a variety. I keep the the, the interest in my guys very high, and that way I don't have to worry about it. We also come with a complete set of processes. So again, we know what kind of data we're getting, we know how the system works, we know how to respond to these things, so we bring to smaller companies a structure and, and a set of procedures and processes that allow them to operate securely without having to, to maintain um, their own processes. They don't need to understand how incident response works, they just need to tell us how it sh what they need from them what their escalation chain is, who to call. We manage all of the, the documentation and provide it for them. So if they do get audited, they have the right documentation, they have the right reports. They can prove that they're doing the right diligence around it. And then lastly, we maintain the technology. Whether it's our cloud-based SIM in Amazon, the sensors that collect the data on premise, all the security feeds, we maintain it, we make sure it works. If Active Directory stops sending us log data, we notify them within 15 minutes. Again, only when we need something from the customer we reach out. And this level of sort of interrupt-driven importance allows someone that might be the only security person at a customer to focus on the business problems, but we interrupt them when we need them. And then generally, it's go find someone from the help desk to clean a workstation, whatever's going on. But when you do need access, we provide a very simplified portal. Doesn't require you to be retrained every time you go into it. Here's your security posture. Here's the incidents that we're working on. Hey, if you want to know, you know where someone went, um, we have it all you know, neatly organized. It is designed to be uh, a self-service interface to your data, but the SE is always there. We generally have customers that log into our portal once a month. They talk to their SE three times a day. They ask questions, hey, I got my CEO saw something on CNN last night. He thinks that all of our Android devices are compromised. What can I tell him? We can go in and say, you know what? You only have 16 Android devices that are compromised and they've only ever been on your guest network. That kind of a response allows you to look like a hero and you've done nothing more than help us make sure we've got the right kind of data. So how do we collect all this data? A Little bit about the architecture. It starts, we make a hardened appliance. It's designed to be a network tap, sit directly in line with your firewall. Natively, it collects a variety of data sources that most people would pay on a line item for from another vendor, whether it be an IDS or a sniffer or some kind of web proxy. We collect all of these different data sources in a predetermined format. Our installation times are measured in minutes. So literally, since we're managing everything, we understand how it goes in. This process is streamlined. We're immediately going to get value out of the system. Add to that sort of traditional log collection, whether it's Active Directory, web servers, application servers, cloud services, um, your infrastructure, router switches, firewalls, um, wireless access points, and then add to that a monthly external um, exposure scan, give you your attack service. What ports are open? What vulnerabilities are there? Whose emails are available on LinkedIn or Facebook or Google so that we know exactly what your attack surface looks like? Tie that into the system so that as we see attacks come in, we have a better chance of understanding it, but also make you keenly aware of how exposed you are, work with you to get that closed up so that you can rest comfortably not being worried about how it works. All this data gets transferred to our Amazon-based, cloud-based SIM. This is where all of our machine learning, our behavioral analytics, anomaly detection runs. It's also where all of our security intelligence feeds come into. So we modify these on a, on a monthly, quarterly basis. But the idea is that we maintain relationships and intelligence feeds, whether they're open source or commercial, 
into all these systems so all the data we get across our customer base is augmented and handled properly and that way you don't have to worry about it if there's a new security feed from high trust we'll pull that in new partner comes in from the homeland security we'll add that in we always add it in the customers don't have to really understand how this works they just get the benefit of actionable intelligence coming out from their security engineer whether it's reporting requests actionable intelligence whatever we take we understand the data we're properly trained we're there but it's a human to human interface almost always when it comes time to, to, to deal with security incidents and, uh, and, and actionable intelligence. Now I want to walk through a couple of case studies just to show you how this works and, and how you might be able to get in a, a, an understanding of how this might be different from a more traditional um, problem. Uh, you know, the number one thing that faces smaller companies these days is ransomware. All the other um, issues aside, ransomware is going to shut them down. If you don't catch it until you know, the next morning or uh, two or three days from now, your data is gone. Um, generally, if you've done proper backups, as I mentioned earlier, you might be back up and running in a day or two. Um, some mid-sized healthcare organizations recently were down for two and three weeks where they couldn't input patient data, they couldn't do anything. Again, not the best place to be. So as you know, ransomware is getting better. The, the delivery systems are becoming more commoditized. The email threats that people are reading, the things they're clicking on are more professional looking. It's becoming a lot easier to get malware into an environment where ransomware can take hold. But if you know what you're doing, if you know what you're looking for, if you're collecting the right data and you're vigilant about it, you can stop ransomware before it really has a chance to, to get going. But what it requires is a bit of vigilance and the right technology. So that's where we come in. This is the only thing we do. Monitor customer security environments as a SOC, provide them with actionable intelligence. We just saw Tom download a piece of ransomware can someone from IT please go take care of it? We've quarantined it from the internet. That way it doesn't really get to go any further. You can go clean up the workstation, know what's going on. We maintain the escalation chains so that within five minutes of ransomware, um, even starting up, we're pinging home to say, hey, I've landed. We let the customers know what's going on. We quarantine those devices so that they can't actually get the encryption packages from the internet. And then we ask the customers to go quarantine those devices from east-west traffic. We maintain escalation protocols, so we know when our customers are on vacation. We know who the backups are, middle of the night, on the weekends, over the holidays. They understand our escalation procedures as well. But again, this is the diligence where if you're in the thick of an incident and you haven't kept this information up to date, you've got no chance of having this happen cleanly. Someone winds up calling the CIO and saying, hey, I can't get in touch with anyone and we've got ransomware. And suddenly it's a fire drill and everyone looks bad rather than having it properly documented, having it well maintained. We test it. We're talking to people routinely. Again, this is something that's exercised throughout the normal course of business over the course of days and weeks. So it's not just in emergencies that it happens. As I said, we also maintain intelligence feeds, whether it's through commercial subscriptions, open source, or our own research lab that develop these things. So we always know the latest threats. We update our, our source IPs, our command and control lists, on, a, on an hourly, minute by minute level. So the latest threats are always there. Again, this is something that you can set up, but if you don't babysit it, you don't monitor it and it stops working, suddenly the exposure starts to creep into a dating system and it's really difficult to maintain a level of intelligence there. So this is what our team looks at. This is our SIM. Um, it is cloud-based off of Elasticsearch. As you can see, it's sort of a traditional view. Again, most people who don't do this on a daily basis They'll have to come in. They'll take a while to get, to get into it. If you happen to go through a major upgrade of your SIM, more than likely you'll require training before you're proficient. Most people can barely afford a single system like this. Having a backup system where they could test with a new version of software, almost unheard of at this level. So you're going to wind up having to learn the system as you use it for your incidents. Our security engineers are trained on a week-by-week -week basis. We are in this all day, every day. This is all we do. So we are intimate with this interface. We are very efficient, very quick. A properly trained security engineer can clear two to 3,000 incidents over the course of an hour, um, which, again, is fairly unheard of in the industry, especially if you really don't do this on, a, on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. If you're clearing incidents for a company and that's like a third of your job, you might be able to do a couple hundred because you have to go do the research, do all the work, and it's not set up for that kind of efficiency. We can quickly come in look at a given, say, ransomware incident, 
look at that incident and very quickly through streamlined interfaces look through, see exactly what's going on, see the timeline, look to see if the firewall blocked it, quickly determine this is something that requires action, block the device, call the customer, talk to a real human, hey, I need someone to go disable this port, go unplug the wire, whatever you do, don't unplug the workstation from power because we still need to do forensics and figure out what happened, the extent of the problem. But again, this all happens in a matter of five minutes. And if ransomware stopped within five minutes, worst case, you're restoring one or two files. You don't really need to go dig in. You've pulled that workstation. That's the way that you can properly respond to ransomware. Go back here. So sort of, again, walk through it at a high level. Ransomware hits. We detect it within five minutes. We're going to help notify the customer, work with your escalation teams, and then sit with you through the entire remediation process. Sit with you on the internal meetings. Again, having a security expert that does this day in, day out, that you can leverage, that maintains that context, is a relatively unique thing in the industry that we found, especially for you know a fraction of the cost of a full-time headcount. Next area, sort of my last case study, is phishing. The gentleman that, that went before me talked about. Um, this is still the you know second biggest problem. People click on emails all the time. It's it's brutal. Um, again, social engineering toolkits. These tools are getting very good at being able to solicit credentials from customers. The good news is, is is that most of the time people don't use the same passwords for personal and work use. But every once in a while, if you don't have good strong security policies, that's not the case. Again, if you know what you're looking for, if you have the right tools, if you're paying attention, these things are generally easy to spot. So here, different view of the same dashboard that I was looking at earlier. But what I've got here is actual successful phishing attempts where we've seen people in the clear entering email addresses, entering in passwords. We actually, because we maintain the right tool sets, will actually get the packet captures of these incidents. We'll know the usernames and passwords. We can let administrators know, you know, Susan over in accounting just used her iTunes password in the clear at a Chinese site. So you need to tell her to go change all that. But again, this is happening in minutes, not hours, not weeks, not, hey, did you realize that I was using my exchange password for Gmail? And so now that that's compromised, they're both compromised. These are the kinds of things that we're dealing with. And as was stated earlier, the real problem here is the users. It's not the technology. It's not, you know, you're never going to prevent this. But people are getting very good at doing very specific spear phishing like attempts on a generic user. It's no longer a CEO or a CIO that's being attacked. It's going to be a generic employee that might have lateral access to data that's interesting. So we offer cyber training, very similar to what was described earlier. Starts with working with our partners to figure out exactly what kind of a test we want to do, notifying the right executive team, managing the entire process. Once we've done an initial phishing sweep and we know what's there, we offer a variety of training programs, whether it be generic basic security um, postures, selecting and handling emails properly, dealing with password security, or even something as, as, uh, as, deal as sensitive as dealing with credit card information, PHI, from those two industries. Then we'll provide reporting, all the different types of knowledge and updates that you need, to keep the business informed of what's going on. And we continue to test. We continue to track the progress. People who routinely open up those phishing emails will eventually get them narrowed down to where, you know, You've, you've clicked on four fishes in the past three months. Perhaps we want to remove you from email for a while. So you've been properly trained in uh, Atlas. This entire service offered turnkey, again, by a security engineer who understands your business, knows what's going on, understands how things are um, set up within your organization so that you really don't need to, uh, to do a lot of work. It's just a matter of telling us who to, who to train. And that's what I had. I don't know if there are any questions. Okay, well thank you very much for your time.